my first time really on stage with a sneak attack because I, I said I could do comedy, but I said, you know what? I don't want to take a chance with my stuff. I had a couple of things. I said, you know, if I take a little bit of Dick Gregory stuff, a little bit of Gar- Camber stuff, I know this stuff works. Right. So I went and I borrowed material from these guys. And it's a terrible thing to say, but the first time you hear that laugh, you almost are like, oh, really? And this is going to sound terrible, too. Even though you're not a musician, girls come up and start saying, wow, that was kind of good. I mean, they don't do that anymore, even though I'm better, but they don't come up anymore and say anything. But girls start whatever, and you start getting a little recognition. And then around the campus, people go, this guy's kind of funny. And you go, oh, okay. So the first time I worked, really, there's there's two different stories. I worked with a group called The Last Poets. Mm -hmm. And the last poets, when people say, go work with the last poets, you know, you should be in this, this whatever, this organization. And I said, poets, come on, like Edna St. Vincent Millay with the flowers and this and that. No, no, no. They said, no, you, you got to hear these guys. They're a little different. I said, no, okay. So I went to their little place. They had a place called the East Wind right next to the Apollo in Harlem. And it was probably about 75 seats. They had about 150 people in there. It was jammed. And I listened to these guys. And, you know, you think you have language now. This was revolutionary. I went, wow. <laughs> and a lot of anti, it was anti-black stuff in there to say mm-hmm. black people, we're not doing it. We're not, you know, we're not the guys. The N-word was prevalent. Nigger came out all the time. They go, oh my God. And see, we didn't, we didn't really, we didn't talk in my neighborhood hatred of nigger. We used it, but it was like a loving thing. Like, yo, nigga, what you doing, man? But these people go, niggas, you stupid. You dumb. You should not. So it was a different kind of thing. It was right around the time Malcolm X got shot. They were big mm-hmm. Malcolm X fans here. My mother, it was, she was still using colored at the time. Don't come down on me for using that word. She was still using colored. And when they talked about Malcolm X, he used to come on the David Susskind show. Right. That was a big deal. He would come on. And I would watch him. And my mother would go, he's crazy. You don't want anything to do with him. You don't want to be around him. Those, those are bad colored people. And Malcolm X would always say, we're not colored. We're Negro. But now since it's moved up to this and that and that. So... I was never really a Malcolm X fan because my mother was not a Malcolm X fan. So I was never really into the guy until I started working with the poets. When I worked with the poets, he was like their, their thing. And he was not, my mother was indifferent toward Martin Luther King. She dug him. He was cool, but not any big, but Malcolm X was like, this Martin Luther King is kind of an Uncle Tom guy. You know, you don't want to be begging white people for this, that, that, and this. So that was the first time I really had worked. And I worked, and I, I did some jokes, and the, and the poets really didn't want me on. A couple, only a couple of guys wanted me on. So I went and totally just destroyed with just some old jokes. And then I said, boy, this is good. I like this. So I worked with them for a while, and we worked. The, this is always some code works they would use. They said, because there was no money involved. They'd say, hey man, there's a benefit for Hassan Ali Rashoon. You go, benefit? Yeah, we don't get paid or anything, but we go in there and do benefit because the man is trying to get them and this and that and that. So we did, I don't think they did benefits. I think I did benefits for like, God, a year and a half. Right. <laughs> we would just get, and they were just called, hey man, you got to show up. And you, we said, could anybody have car fare, some train fare? No, man, it's a benefit. So it's always that kind of deal like that. But I got a lot of time in, so I work with a lot of guys. I work with Stokely Carmichael. Uh-huh. And my, all, my one big joke about Stokely Carmichael, because he was in SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, right. and he was very much a Pan-African. That means going back to Africa with Marcus Garvey and stuff like that. And he was big into that. And I would always say to, to Stokely, I said, you know, Stokely, there's a lot of white people who are in this pan-Africanism with you. They'd like to see you go back. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd always say, you know what? 
You're just not relevant, man. You're a waste of time. Oh. Uh, what about the African room? Tell, tell us a little the bit The African about that. room, here's what happened. I was working uptown, not making any money. Somebody said, you know, you can make some money if you went downtown. There's a place called the African room. You should go down there because you go down there, you could go to the village after that and then maybe the improv, work your way up. I said, the African room, what's this? He said, go down there and get in the open mic. I didn't know open mic or anything like that. So I went down there and they had, <laughs> they had this big gorilla on stage. And his eyes would do this. Thing. And it's the first time I had worked with like commercial acts. My act was totally black all about the blackness. And we had people, a lot of talented people, Bette Mittler, mm -hmm. Irene Cara, David Brenner, Steve Lannisberg, uh, Al Jarreau, all those guys were working there. And uh, I went on the first time in my act, there's different kind of black people. So I had worked with the last poet black people, but then these black people down there, they were in, the society. They lived in normal situation and they weren't angry. And they were going, why is this guy so angry? So you had to adjust. You had to adjust to those different kinds. People don't realize there's different sets of black people. This is not just one thing. So there's the angry black people. Like now we have, you know, Black Lives Matters and stuff like that. But then there's a different Russell Simmons kind of guys out there. And that's what we had downtown. We had those kind of guys down there.